So in this session, I'm going to show how to perform a one bucket test. This is considered the gold standard for checking the electrodes, the cables, connectors, AD box, firmware, driver, softwares, the whole system from front to back. To do this test, you need the Active2 system assembled, a container of water uh, with some table salt. It's about a teaspoon to a gallon. Uh, my bucket's not quite a gallon, so I have less than a teaspoon. And um, I have the electrodes on hand that I'll be testing. So I'll load the ActiveView software, press start, and you'll see that the signals are flat. That's because the offsets on those channels are at the maximum of the input range. With nothing connected, they're at the maximum negative of the input range. And as I begin to connect electrodes to the system, you'll see those offsets change. So first, let's connect the CMS DRL cable. So we plug this into the front left circular connector, submerge those two electrodes in the water, and you should see the blue light come on on the top right hand side of the screen as well as here on the front panel of the AD box. All of the inputs are still at the maximum negative of the input range. So to check this set of electrodes um, for integrity, meaning to test everything from the electrode pellet to the wires to the connector and all the functionality of the box itself behind that. I'll just connect those electrodes to the input labeled A1 through 32. And I'll take the electrode heads and submerge them in the water. And what I should see is that the offsets will come into range. The blue light will remain on if the electrodes are good. And these offsets will begin to trend toward zero. You'll see that there's a, a, a range of offsets, but that there are only a couple that are above, maybe only one, in fact. Uh, the rest are trending upward. If I select, select the monopolar display tab and I turn off the high pass filter, you'll see that most of the channels are trending upward meaning that they're drifting toward equilibrium at zero. They won't achieve zero, but they'll get closer to zero. So I don't have any electrodes connected to EXG one through eight, but I can test those in the same type of test. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off for now. Just so you know, if you check the EXG one through eight channels, they are displayed on the left-hand side one through four and five through eight on the left. So for now, I'm watching these channels to make sure that none of them go out of range uh, and that they do trend towards zero. You don't want to soak the electrodes for more than five or 10 minutes routinely in any kind of liquid. Uh, so keep this test to under 10 minutes at a stretch. Um, on first use, electrodes might be, need to be soaked about 10 minutes. Uh, on a routine basis, about three minutes a week is a, a reasonable idea. It gives you a chance to check the functionality of the electrodes, as well as um, balancing them, actively balancing the offsets of the electrodes, which means that when they're in contact with the electrolyte, which is a homogeneous solution, uh, they should not drift toward equilibrium, they should already be at equilibrium. So the important things to note in this test are uh, that the, the raw offsets should be less than plus or minus 40, and it looks like they all are. This one is probably the closest to 40. Um, if they don't seem to be moving enough in the direction of equilibrium, you can take the electrode heads and swirl them around to mix up the salt. I think my salt might not have been very well mixed. And if I submerge those again, they will probably equilibrate better. So 
So the important things to know are that if the blue light goes off when any of the electrodes are submerged, it'll look something like this. You'll see that this light flashes blue and you'll see that the, the software screen pulsates every half second. It's not as obvious in this display as it is in this display that there's a pulse every half second. So let's say that CMS URL is submerged and there's an offset uh, problem. In other words, the blue light is off. So this is how we can test if there's a broken wire or a bent connector pin or some, some other problem in the box. Um, what I'll do is I'll remove half of the electrodes at a time from the bucket. So I'll just untangle them a little bit. And take half of them out. And just for the sake of discussion, let's say that when I remove these, the blue light goes back on. That tells me that in this range of electrodes, there's a problem. So what I'll do is I'll take half of that and submerge it again. And the blue light remains on. So I think the problem is somewhere isolated to this group. I'll take this group and submerge it. Blue light remains on. So I know the problem is, is isolated to this range. If I take these two and submerge them, um, I only have two remaining, so I know the problem is in one of those two. So let's say that I submerge that one and it, the blue light remains on. But when I submerge the last one, the blue light goes off. Just for the sake of illustration, that's how you would identify which electrode is causing a problem. That electrode then should be marked and uh, you can note the serial number and let us know and we'll get it repaired for you.